Hello, my name is Angela Hamblin Kelly, and I'm the Executive Director of the Baptist Centers for Good Grief. Our podcast, Grief is Real, Big, and Better Shared, is the podcast everyone needs to hear, but nobody wants to hear. It will also include a monthly Coping Skills Toolbox YouTube segment. As grief counselors, we look at grief as all of the thoughts and feelings that run around inside our minds and bodies after someone we love dies. We know that grief can be overwhelming and full of many, many changes. The feelings of grief and the secondary losses cannot all be worked on at once. And even though we feel like we want to be fixed, we have to remember we're not broken. We're grieving. So this month, we're going to think about our racing thoughts. Racing thoughts are normal with grief. Our thoughts often spin. And when we have continuous racing and repetitive thoughts about the death of our loved one, certain stressors, or even the replaying of certain events, Let's listen as Deborah talks with us about a coping strategy for racing thoughts. Racing thoughts are natural and common for those who are grieving. Our thoughts spin and we may have continuous racing and repetitive thoughts about our loss, flashbacks, stressors, or even just the replaying of certain events of the day are all the things on our to-do list. A technique I will talk about today can be used to slow down the mental runway of intrusive thoughts. It can be especially effective calming your mind when you have trouble falling asleep, but it can also be used at any time during the day when you are feeling mentally overwhelmed. It begins with thinking of the mind as being like a TV. Now, it's important to note that we can think in words and in images. For example, if I said to you right now, Think of a slice of pepperoni pizza. What comes to mind? Probably an image of a slice of pepperoni pizza, not just the words pepperoni pizza. Continuing to look at our minds as a TV, what comes with a TV? A remote control. The word control reassures us that we have a certain level of control over what we watch on our actual TVs as well as what we think about in our minds. Just like we switch channels on our TVs until we find something we want to watch, or we change the channel when something is no longer of interest to us, we can use the same technique for our mind. To demonstrate this practice, I will first have the mental remote control to your mind. In just a few moments, I will say a series of different words, and each time I say a new word or phrase, It represents a channel change, and I want you to start thinking of that new word or phrase. Don't let go of that image until I change the channel, because remember, I'm the one with the remote control for the purposes of this exercise only. When I say these words, try making the image or scene very vivid in your mind with lots of details, just as you would see on a TV screen. Ready? Let's begin. Think of the beach, the zoo, your favorite food, a bird flying high in the sky, a place that makes you happy. Good job. Do you see the power of channel changing, or in this case, thought switching? The remote control belongs to you now. Just as TVs have the cooking channel, the weather channel, news channels and sports channels, among others, I'd like you to take some time thinking about the channels you keep your mind on the most and give them a name. For example, someone once told me that she had trouble falling asleep every night because she had many reoccurring worries about the next day and everything she had to do and would have to get done. She called this the Tomorrow Channel. She spent a lot of time on this channel and it affected her ability to sleep and increased her levels of stress. It might be helpful to see if you notice any patterns in your thinking. Get curious, what do you think about the most? Do these thoughts tend to come up at a certain time of day or in certain situations? Perhaps you have a grief channel or a regret channel you watch frequently. I encourage you to get creative with the names you come up with for the channels you keep your mind on the most. 
Once you've identified the channels of your mind, I want you to add two or three new channels that can be helpful alternative options for your mind to think on. Perhaps it can be a happy place channel in which you take a mental vacation to the place of your dreams or a peace channel in which you imagine symbols and colors that represent peace to you. The more vivid and detailed you make the images in your mind using all the five senses, the more effective this coping strategy will be. It's important to know that it's not about turning your mind off or trying to empty your mind of thoughts, but rather to realize you always have the remote control and can switch your mind to think things differently. Perhaps you allow yourself to watch 10 minutes on your grief channel before changing it to the happy place channel. Sometimes it is even necessary to allow us to stay on these channels for a certain period of time that are not as pleasant to think on because they allow us to process things that do need our attention. When this is the case, it might even help to spend time talking about what we're watching in our mind with a trusted friend as if they were on the couch next to us listening to us talk about a TV series we've been binge watching. Perhaps even drawing or writing what we're thinking can help as well. Like most coping strategies, doing this exercise only one or two times won't likely be very effective. Try using this technique consistently and repetitively, and perhaps it can be another effective tool that stays in your coping skills toolbox to reach in and use any time you need some relief. Just like the tools in our toolboxes at home, we have to mindfully select the right tool. We have to actually pick it up and use it when we need it. For example, the hammer doesn't work if you don't actually pick it up and actually use it. So think about programming your remote control with these new channels to help you balance your grief and racing thoughts with peace and self-soothing thoughts. Remember, you are not alone. Grief is real, big, and better shared. We'll see you soon with another Coping Skills Toolbox segment. And remember, you can find our podcast, Grief is Real, Big, Better Shared, wherever you download your podcast. You can learn more about us also at www.baptistgriefcenters.org. I'm Diane Brockmeyer, the CEO of Mid-America Transplant, and we are honored to sponsor this episode of Grief is Real, Big, Better Shared. At Mid-America Transplant, we have the privilege of working with families across Southern Missouri and Northeast Arkansas who choose to donate their loved one's organs or tissues. While donation often brings families comfort, they are still heartbroken by their loss. We are proud to work with the Center for Good Grief and appreciate everything they are doing in the region to help bring healing to people who are coping with loss. Grief support is especially meaningful to me as it was a tremendous help to my daughter who lost her dad when she was seven years old. 20 years later, she still recalls the positive, safe feelings she had with her grief support group. They understood her. Mid-America Transplant is inspired by life and by the donor families who give transplant patients a second chance. For more information about becoming a donor, visit sayyesgivelife.org.